beaming across the eastern townships from the heart of Brome, Missisqua. This is 99.1 CIDI. Hello and welcome to The Alternatives. You have choices. Brought to you by the Sunshine Center in Sutton. Hi, my name is Ilya Kavukis, and I'm the owner and operator of the Sunshine Center in Sutton. Welcome to the new show called The Alternatives. Um, it's going to be a weekly show. It's going to be aired on Tuesdays at 5 in the afternoon and Thursday mornings at 8.30. So enjoy. Uh, the Sunshine Center is a place in Sutton. It's a holistic center where teachers and therapists come together in a unified spirit to provide tools to help people on their healing path. That's what we say when we're in there, and that's our intention when we're there. Uh, well, you can reach us at our website at sunshinecenter.ca. We also have an email address if you have any uh, information or flowers you want to send me at ilia at sunshinecenter.ca. So as I said, I'm the owner and operator of the center that has been in operation for four years. Uh, what I do at the center is, uh, besides getting, making sure that it's open and running, I also am a massage therapist. I have uh, uh, other modalities or other therapies that I do is Reiki. I am also a Swedish massage therapist. I have a uh, background also in uh, yoga, yoga dance. I'm a personal trainer. So all that put together, my goodness, I, I have, certainly have a lot of information. And I, that's exactly what I want to do is I want to share this information with you. The objective of the show is to present and talk to you, the audience, about alternative medicine. And basically, I want to give you some knowledge and hopefully this will inspire you uh, to at least explore different paths uh, than conventional medicine. I'd like to, first of all, <laughs> give you a definition, according to Wikipedia, what alternative medicine is. Quote, open quotations, is any healing practice that does not fall within the realm of conventional medicine close quotations. So this is according to Wikipedia. Uh, today we're airing the show is August 4th, according to Wikipedia today. Um, that's fine. Anything that doesn't fall within the realm of conventional medicine. Uh, there is a lot of studies done on alternative medicine. Also, I'd like to say is also known as complementary or holistic medicine. Uh, that are, are finding more and more today that these all these modalities, all these therapies uh, are quite uh, substantial and there's a lot of evidence that says and shows the effects of all these medicines, of all these alternative medicines rather. So I'll leave it up to you to do your homework on, on any particular one. Part of the show is to uh, introduce you to some of the local therapists here in the eastern townships and uh, to introduce you to them to, so they can share with you what they do and how they work so that you can have at least a basis. And perhaps if you're inspired, you can, you can call them up, make an appointment and try it out for your first, uh, at least try out your first appointment. So what, it, what, is, what is really what we want to do when we're talking about alternative medicine is in conventional medicine, what they end up doing often is they treat symptoms of 
a disease or of a situation of a of a symptom of what's happening in your body. And we what we want to do in alternative is we want to find the cause. So we take the person, that's why it's often known as a holistic therapy, is because we take the person as a whole. The the person just does not have a liver that's not functioning well. The person has a liver that's attached to other organs, that's attached to his body, that is in the body of a person who has a mind. And how does that person function on a daily basis? So often what we looked at we look at rather is our their stress level uh you know what are their lifestyle habits are they um working too hard and not balancing it with with rest now of course you'll say well i have to work i have to make money and that usually takes up most of my time that's fine but studies have shown that if you just relax even just 15 minutes a day of doing absolutely nothing and not doing anything like meditating or anything, which is, is very good, and I'll have someone on the show that talks about meditation, but just sitting there and doing nothing, uh, turning off music, uh, maybe not even open eyes, maybe just close eyes, just for 15 minutes a day, studies have shown that it can decrease your stress level. Um, exercise. I'm also a personal trainer, so I, I strongly suggest exercising. Studies have shown that 220 minutes a week is the basic minimum we need to stay somewhat fit. So, of course, if you're chowing down bags of chips and ice cream every night, then you're going to need a lot more uh, exercise in your life, uh, besides a nutrition specialist to help you <laughs> balance your meals. But basically, that's what we want to do, is we want to uh, show you that you, you have to look at yourself holistically in a whole um, manner uh, your stress level is your relationships how are your relationships with your family and friends what are they like so important uh, we need uh, we need connections with other people so when when you come into my office for instance you might come in with a with a uh, your neck and shoulders are really sore, and uh, I'll ask you to fill out a, 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 a sheet talking about you know asking you, you what uh, if you have any medical conditions, anything diagnosed, and if you're taking any medication, whatnot. And I'll also ask you about lifestyle if uh, if 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 I sense that you're open to to going deeper into the root of your of your tension. Um, it, it's important to know, it, you know, throughout the massage, we often don't talk when we're, uh, when I'm actually doing the massage, but some, often people do have uh, moments where they might express certain things, and that's fine, that's acceptable. Uh, it depends on the therapist. But uh, most of the, the information is gathered before the actual massage. So, um, I like to get as much information as I can about the person. I'll ask about their their habits, their their exercise habits. Uh, lots of people sometimes will <laughs> not exactly tell the truth. They'll say, "Oh, well, you know, we have. Uh, I like to go hiking and biking and swimming and running and uh, skiing." And and I'll be like, "Wow, that's great!" So, how many hours exactly would you say you spend a week doing that? Oh, well, about. Um, you know, we ski all day Saturday, and then I uh, I might uh, go for a walk, you know, on on Tuesday night. But I'm just so busy; I don't have time. <laughs> so what we want to do is we want to make the person aware that you know they they might be doing a little bit too extreme in one in one area. They might be taking too much time on the Saturday skiing all day, but then. The rest of the week, they're they're running around and, and not really concerned about their their health and their their physical activity. So we want to. I'll talk to them about balancing out. What is it exactly that you need to you know find time to do it, make the time to do it. It's so important. People say I don't have time, but it is so important to make the time. Uh, I know I wake up at sometimes five o'clock or six o'clock in the morning just to get in a 20 or 30 minute walk. And that's the beginning of my day. So if I do have a crazy day, I, I won't do anything else the rest of the day. But I know at least I've had that at 30 minutes in the morning of, of a good vigorous walk but then I'll, I'll throw in some weight training at least three times a week uh, I'll do some cycling in the summer uh, at least uh, four or five hours a week of cycling I'll do some skiing cross country skiing or uh, snowshoeing in the winter uh, love to do that it's so important 
um, you know, that's, that's a great thing about living here in uh, Quebec, Canada, that we have these four seasons that we can have a lot of variety in, in what, our, what we do. So, uh, you know, it's important to, to mix it up. I know for me, it's, uh, variety is important, but maybe you like something more stable or get a gym membership and just make the time and go and do, do it. You're listening to the new show, The Alternatives, on CIDI 99.1. I'm your host, Ilya Kavukas, owner and operator of the Sunshine Center in Sutton. Um, I was talking about why alternative medicine is important and what is the difference between alternative medicine and conventional medicine. Uh, as I said earlier, conventional medicine has a tendency to deal with symptoms, whereas when you come to a therapist who is either a massage therapist, an acupuncturist, they will look at you as a whole person and deal with you from head to toe, basically. <laughs> you want to put it that way. Uh, they'll look at your stress level, as I said, and uh, very important. Besides treating you with their different uh, modality that they use, uh, they'll also have recommendations for you. They'll recommend, uh, uh, and it's not a prescription for a pill or anything like that, Although I don't recommend you giving up and, and not taking your pills altogether, um, they will recommend perhaps uh, some vitamins that you need to take, some supplements, uh, some herbal remedies. Uh, they'll even possibly recommend, and I've done this myself, is activities. They might recommend a yoga class, uh, Qigong class. Speaking of Qigong, uh, my uh, first guest of the show, which is next week, is uh, going to be Colette Rappeau. She is uh, an acupuncturist. She works out of my center. We've been together now for four years. She's a wonderful acupuncturist. We're very grateful to have her. And she teaches Qigong as well. We have a big 850 foot square foot studio where, uh, where we teach different uh, courses. So... Uh, they'll they'll recommend uh, taking a class of yoga or qigong um, exercise. They'll recommend uh, meditation. Often I, I recommend meditation. We have someone who teaches meditation at the center as well. Uh, you can look around and decide where is it that you'd like to go and learn meditation. It basically follow your instinct uh, and and what is it that inspires you the most. And I will have somebody on the show eventually that will be talking about uh, meditation and the different uh, uh, benefits of that. Um, I'd like to also talk about the rest, how the show will, will look like uh, in general. Uh, besides having wonderful guests, I'd like to share all their information on what they do. Uh, I'd like to offer at this point, if there's any therapist out there who hearing the show would like to be a guest on the show, they can email me at, il at ilia at sunshinecenter.ca. Uh, just a little thing, center, I spelt it with T-E-R at the end, so <laughs> ilia at sunshinecenter.ca. Uh, I'd love to have you on the show. We can we can talk about what you do. If uh, also for you listeners, if there's a modality or a therapy out there that you're curious about, but you're you know, not uh, sure who to contact or where to find this person uh, or a person to practice, uh, could you you could email me as well at ilia at sunshinecenter.ca. Uh, I'd love to. Uh, receive emails and answer questions, uh, part of my daily thing I do. Other things I'd like to do on the show is provide some tips and recipes for you listeners. Today, actually, I'd like to give you a, a, a tip. Is uh, Have you ever heard of dry body brushing? Uh, it's a wonderful way to stimulate the immune system by stimulating the lymphatic system. It uh, basically you take a uh, a brush that is made of vegetable bristles, and you brush the body from the extremities towards the heart. It uh, should have like a pinkish hue, maybe a bit red when you're done. Uh, if you're interested in having a brush, you can contact me at ilia@sunshinecenter.ca, and I will let you know where you can acquire one of these body brushing dry skin body brushes. 
Uh, I myself have been using them for a couple of years now, and I find my skin glows. It is very soft. I'm often told I have baby soft skin. <laughs> And uh, I, I had a tendency of doing a little bit of a uh, um, little bit of skin rash and irritation uh, sometimes, depending on what I've eaten or, or uh, the, the temperature of the sun and, and whatnot. But since I've been using this uh, uh, body brush, I there's nothing like that anymore. I'm my skin is clear and, as I said, glowing. So. Um, uh, once, uh, if anyone, if anyone out there knows of these body brushes and uses them, feel free to c let me know if uh, what your experiences are with them as well. The other thing I'd like to offer on this show for you are some recipes. Uh, now you might be thinking a recipe for food. Well, yes, of course, uh, I'd love to offer some great recipes. Uh, by the way, if anybody out there has some great recipes for me for natural, alternative, uh, like food, uh, you know, maybe vegetarian or maybe some some meat dishes that uh, you find when cooked a certain way is, uh, is much more helpful uh, to digest. Um, the, other, uh, the other type of recipe that we could come up with uh, on this show or are some stuff for body care. For instance, have you ever heard of a bug repellent uh, that is non-chemical based? Well, I happen to have a great recipe for that. It is uh, uh, essential oils, basically, that uh, we mix together in natural spring water, and it's absolutely fabulous. It smells good, and it's very, very efficient. Take two ounces of natural spring water in a little bottle, a plastic bottle or a glass bottle with a, with a little uh, spritzer on the top of it. You can pick them up at the pharmacy. Uh, mix in 12 drops of citronella essential oil otherwise known as lemongrass. When I went uh, looking for citronella essential oil, I didn't find any. So uh, they recommended lemongrass and it's just as good. Uh, 12 drops of eucalyptus oil and 12 drops of tea tree oil. You mix that all up in two ounces of spring water and it is wonderful. As you spray it onto your body, you I suggest you rub it in as well so it penetrates. And uh, the bugs have left me alone since I've had this spray on me. And uh, it doesn't interfere with, uh, with the other essential oils I used. It's uh, wonderful. Another segment of the show that I'd like to talk about is a question and answer period. You can email your questions at ilia at sunshinecenter.ca. I would like to mention that, of course, the emails will be confidential, uh, unless you say that it's all right for, for me to use your name on air. Um, feel free to email me questions that you would normally not want to talk to about to, <laughs> to someone face to face uh, I have often these kind of questions in my in my practice so I totally understand uh, where you're coming from so I, I look forward to to your emails forward to your questions I would like to take the chance right now to talk about a question a couple of questions that I do get often in my practice First question here is, should I stop all my medication and take only natural supplements and meditate and do yoga? Well, of course, absolutely not. Do not stop any of your medication that your doctor or physician has prescribed for you that you have already started taking. You must always consult your doctor before stopping or starting any medication. And if if through a session of uh, acupuncture, or massage, or anything else, uh, the, the practitioner has recommended something uh, like herbs and whatnot, ask your doctor if he feels or she feels that it might interfere with, uh, with the medication you're taking. Oftentimes, uh, it doesn't, but you never know. It's, it's better to be safe and sorry. I find that pharmacists are actually quite good at finding out if 
any alternative therapies or any uh, alternative medication. They are great for figuring out if there's any conflicts with your present medication. Very important uh, not to stop uh, your whatever you're taking presently. Again, these are always uh, complementary alternatives. Uh, very important to remember that that. You know, while you're taking your medication, while you're doing, for instance, if you're if you're doing some cancer treatments or whatnot, it's very important that you continue uh, what is recommended by the the doctors uh, who are taking care of you and doing complementary things like meditation, uh, yoga, qigong, exercising. These are all things that you do along with your regular meditation. If you feel at some point uh, with your doctor's permission that you want to come off of any medication, then that's between you and your doctor. Uh, any practitioner of alternative medicine, if they are suggesting that you get off your medication, I, I would seriously consider uh, not doing that and wonder why uh, anybody would suggest that. So these are one of the things you want to look out for if anybody's saying, recommending that you you stop all your medication. Um. You're listening to The Alternatives, brand new show here on CIDI 99.1. I'm your host, Ilya Kavukis. This is our very first show, and I look forward to spending uh, many more shows with you and interviewing new therapists uh, in their different domains. I was Earlier I was talking about questions and answers that I often get uh, throughout my practice uh, as a therapist, and I'd like to continue with these questions. Uh, often I get uh, the question of uh, what is the best type of meditation? Meditation is a, a very personal uh, practice. There are many, many types of meditation. You can do visual med meditations, you can do audio meditations, there, the list goes on. Uh, you can focus on your breathing. Uh, you just have to explore the different venues, the different avenues of meditation, and I strongly suggest that you do pick one. Uh, sometimes it's the one that's easiest for you. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the show that it's wonderful to just sit for 15 minutes a day and do absolutely nothing. Uh, it is uh, it is mandatory, actually, in our lifestyle today. We're being bombarded with so many things all the time. Uh, it, it just never ends. The, the stimulation, the computer, the television, the, the billboards, uh, the traffic. Uh, one of the reasons why I moved out here to the townships is because I wanted to be surrounded, actually, with more trees than people. Have, uh, have a vision of green Whenever I opened my uh, windows or whenever I walked outside, uh, green is a, a wonderful, calming color. And uh, actually, speaking of color, I, uh, I've recently done a couple of shows on this station uh, that was with uh, Aurelian Guillory called The Living Color. I don't know if you've heard of, of them already. Uh, there's going to be another one aired on the 27th of August. That'll be the, th the part three of the three-part series that I aired with Aurelian. It was wonderful. Uh, we talked about the chakras, the, the, the chakras and how the, they affect our body and the colors and how the colors in a, in a room can be very relaxing or stimulating. So I curious about your comments and questions about that show if you heard it or if anything feel free to email me at ilia at sunshinecenter.ca again on a personal note uh, what you might be curious what brought me on this path of alternative uh, I don't come from a <laughs> 
a past of uh, parents who were, who were brought up in the 60s and were flower children and having patchouli and whatnot in the, in the house. I had none of that. I was, uh, I was born of Greek parents in Montreal. And as you can imagine, the typical Greek family, they were, we were eating meat uh, almost every day, uh, often using commercial products to clean the home, uh, wasting, not recycling, uh, typical wasting and, and getting rid of our garbage the, the way everybody used to in, the, in those years. And when anybody got sick, well, of course, what we would we do, we would go to our doctor and then the hospital if need be and uh, listen very diligently to what the doctor said and got the prescription and got the medication and did whatever we were told. Um, I remember eating mounds of white sugar when I was a child. Uh, as a matter of fact, if ever I had a sore throat, my mother would come in the bedroom and and shove a teaspoon of white sugar down my throat. <laughs> I think back on that and I cringe at the amount of white sugar and candy that we I ate as a child and, and anybody else that was growing up in those years, the 70s and early 80s. I think just along my evolution, uh, just being exposed and interested in all kinds of new things, I fell upon different books and I was reading different things and I fell upon one book called The Celestine Prophecy. And when a friend of mine saw me reading that, she says, well, you know, if you're interested in that sort of thing, you need to come to this school that is giving these free lectures on Monday nights called the Natural Health Institute, NHC. I was uh, at the time living in NDG. So I said, sure, why not? And I went into the school and downstairs and listened to my first lecture. And it, I was blown away. I, I felt like I had just found this place that will answer all my questions. Of course, I have to tell you, I had a very strong need uh, since I was a child, even now, to help people in, in every time, in any case, if there was somebody in need, I felt like I needed to be there and help them. And uh, I discovered these wonderful courses. I was taking a course on spiritual psychotherapy 101. I was taking um, Reiki, reflexology. I just dove into it and fell in love with yoga. This was in the early 90s. And from there, you just start meeting people and they show you one thing and somebody shows you something else. It just opened up my whole whole life into this whole new domain that, um, you know, I sort of see that in the past I was, you know, uh, curious about the alternatives and different things, but it was really in that time that I discovered what I really like to do. And that's how I started on this path. And I really look forward to sharing with you all the things that I've learned and people I've met along my path that have studied uh, and practice now these different therapies and modalities. And hopefully they'll inspire you to, to take a different path. Thank you for listening to The Alternatives. You have choices. If you want to reach me, you can dial 450-538-1111. I can be reached at the center. Website is sunshinecenter.ca. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week.